Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover what lifting tempo is best to maximize muscle growth. First and foremost, let's define what exactly tempo means. Tempo essentially refers to the cadence of the repetition. Most notably, we are concerned with the duration of each repetition. However, there are three distinct phases of each repetition where the tempo can be manipulated. Let's now cover what these three phases are. The first phase is the concentric muscle action. This can be thought of as the lifting portion of the movement where we are actively contracting to move the load. During the concentric phase, the muscle fibers are shortening to pull on the bones and causing movement. For example, when we perform a bicep curl, the concentric portion is when we flex the elbow to lift the load up towards the shoulder. Next, we have the eccentric portion of the lift. This can be thought of as the lowering phase of the movement where we are actively controlling the weight from falling due to gravity. During the eccentric phase, the muscle fibers are still working, although they are resisting movement rather than producing movement. In this phase, the muscle fibers are actually lengthening while producing force. For example, during a bicep curl, the eccentric portion is when the elbow extends to control the weight back down to the starting position. And the last phase of a lift is the isometric or paused portion. This is where there is no movement at all, either at the very start or very end of the range of motion. This portion can involve either isometric muscle actions or a passive pause. The difference between the two is that an isometric contraction involves active muscle force to be produced to hold a weight in a stationary position. A pause is where the muscle is not contracting at all and it is simply held in position under gravitational force. For example, during a bicep curl, at the very bottom range of the lift, the biceps aren't really working where you're just holding the weight in position with the hands. However, at the very top range of the lift, we would need to actively contract the biceps to hold this position, otherwise the weight would just fall back down. So now we understand the three forms of muscle actions that occur during a typical resistance exercise. How do these muscle actions influence hypertrophy? Well, it is quite clear that isometric muscle actions are simply inferior to the other two dynamic muscle actions. However, it is often assumed that eccentric muscle actions are superior to concentric for the goal of muscle growth. Let's now discuss if this is in fact true. If we were to look at an individual muscle action alone, then eccentric contractions would probably be superior. This is because we are stronger eccentrically than we are concentrically. Therefore, we are able to use more weight or perform more reps using eccentric only muscle actions, which would likely result in greater muscle growth. However, when performing common resistance training exercises, we perform both concentric and eccentric actions, not one or the other. Therefore, we will be stressing the muscle using both forms of dynamic muscle actions. Therefore, we can't really look at these muscle actions in isolation. Let's now explore what influence lifting tempo has on muscle hypertrophy. There are a few factors to consider regarding tempo which we will now cover. In terms of concentric muscle actions, the tempo used probably has minimal if any effect at all. This is because regardless of the tempo used, the muscle will ultimately be taken close to failure and the fibers will be stressed. If we do this with a slow or fast concentric tempo, it probably won't make much difference. Furthermore, tempo will always slow down towards the end of a set anyway, as the muscle becomes fatigued. The only real consideration worth noting is that we should probably avoid using the extreme ends of tempo. In other words, we probably don't want to perform the concentric portion very fast or extremely slow. A very fast tempo may throw your technique off slightly and stress other tissues unnecessarily. A very slow tempo, on the other hand, may require you to lift a significantly lower weight, which may limit the hypertrophic stimulus. Next, let's discuss eccentric tempo. Eccentric tempo is probably slightly more of a concern for hypertrophy training, but still not that important. Once again, regardless of the eccentric tempo, we will still be stressing the muscle by the end of the set and achieving the adaptations we are after. However, like the concentric muscle actions, we probably want to avoid the extremes of both ends of lifting tempo. A very fast eccentric phase will mean that the muscle isn't actually working to lower the weight, instead gravity will be doing all the work. This would mean that we aren't really getting the desired eccentric muscle actions, and the muscle is only really being stressed in the concentric phase. Furthermore, a very slow eccentric tempo may limit performance too drastically and inhibit the total tension being experienced by the muscle. Another consideration for lifting tempo is the stretch shortening cycle. The stretch shortening cycle is basically when the elastic properties of the muscles and tendons are used to provide a recoil and assist with force production. This occurs when we have a fast change from an eccentric to concentric muscle action. 
For example, if we perform a squat with a bounce at the bottom of the lift, we get an elastic recoil from the knee and hip joints, allowing us to lift more weight. When training to maximize muscle growth, we probably want to limit involvement of the stretch shortening cycle. This is because the stretch shortening cycle primarily involves the tendons rather than active muscle contraction. Therefore, we are likely distributing more stress on the tendons rather than on the target muscle. We are also taking tension off the muscle in probably the most effective range for the exercise. This is because training a muscle in a stretched position appears to be highly hypertrophic. So the stretch shortening cycle may limit active muscle contraction when the muscle is at its longest length. So allowing too much involvement of the stretch shortening cycle may provide an inferior hypertrophic stimulus and also likely result in greater joint stress. The next consideration for lifting tempo is paused reps. Is there any potential reason to use paused repetitions either at the end range, start range or midway through? While we don't really have any evidence on this topic, it doesn't really make sense that paused reps would provide any additional benefit to a set. Pausing at certain portions may make the set more difficult and stress the muscles earlier, which is probably a fine way to train, but it doesn't seem necessary at all. The only potential benefit that pause reps could have is during certain metabolite techniques. If trainees pause reps in a passive position that doesn't require muscle contraction to hold, then they may be able to extend a set beyond what they otherwise could have performed. This may be a viable option for metabolite work like what would be seen during rest pause or cluster set techniques. So what practical applications can we conclude from all of this information? Well firstly, lifting tempo probably doesn't have much influence on hypertrophy outcomes when sets are taken close to failure. However, lifting with a very fast or very slow concentric or eccentric tempo is probably not a great idea because it may simply limit total mechanical tension of each set. We also want to avoid significant involvement of the stretch shortening cycle because this will probably increase joint stress and limit muscle tension in a stretched position. Therefore, as a practical guideline, trainees should simply lift with a controlled tempo where the muscles are actively involved in both the eccentric and concentric portions. This tempo should be controlled throughout the entire range of motion from the very start to the very end range of a lift. Naturally, concentric tempo will slow down due to fatigue as each set is taken close to failure. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.